What's up guys? Thanks for tuning in. My name is Gregson. Welcome to Shifting Lanes. I have Hanson and Chad with me today because now we can finally get together as a whole and check out the Project Volvo V70R. So we're going to give you our first impressions on our first drive. So let's hit it. All right, we're all together finally to drive this car for the first time. I've been driving around in it a little bit, but guys, what are your first thoughts as we kind of pull out of the parking lot here? The brakes don't work. No, they don't. Uh, Fairly well, soft pedal. We're, yes, very, very soft. We're in this very gravelly section and just uh, coming to a stop. There's very little brake feel. Nope. Again, I think those Brembo brakes uh, are in dire need of a pad change. Yeah. At the very least. I nice. mean, the rotors aren't in great shape either. There's yeah. a lot of grooving on yeah. them. Yeah. Air. See. <laughs> cool. You can see in the last video where I did everything that was wrong. Uh, definitely <laughs> needs some new rotors and 100% needs new pads. But, but I mean, as far as the interior is concerned, I mean, this is what, 13 years old? Yeah. It's not terrible. I mean, the center console is oh, man. Oh, so many Impromptu things. comforter test. <laughs> but the, uh, the center console, it's seen better days. The seats are, you know, used. I guess yeah. is the best way to t describe them. Yeah. Well, you know, th this is like actual leather. It wasn't like uh, dyed or anything like that. Well, it might be dyed. This one's blue. I don't think we've seen any blue cows. No, um, you this definitely was dyed, but that's the way but, they made the interiors. They were blue well, some yeah. of, on some of them. But, uh, you know, it's just like, it's just, this is regular wear and tear. And just like from the seat belts, scrubbing against the seats, the bolsters, you constantly going in and out. I mean, it's it's gotten some beating. But uh, with that said, this still feels not, you know, not too bad. For what the car is, and for it being 13 years old, it's really not that bad. Yeah. I mean, there are far worse cars for four grand out there, and I think that this is probably one of the better ones, to be honest with you. This this feels like a worn-in baseball glove. Just yeah. sitting sitting in this thing is like that old lazy boy couch. It's all it's all worn in, it's like kind of glossy, you're kind of like sliding around in it. Even the steering wheel is like nicely shaped. It's like fairly, th fairly thick rimmed, and you know what I love about this console is like it's such a like a throwback. It's a, uh, it's it's like when you were a kid and you stepped in your dad's car and you looked at the console, like you just want to play with all the buttons. That's what this is. Like yeah. I just want to press all these buttons. It just <laughs> looks so fascinating. <laughs> well, to that to that point, the uh, it doesn't feel spectacularly dated in here. You know, it obviously is from a different era. There's no center mounted touchscreen display or anything. But that said, it's not really old. It doesn't beat you over the head with, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Oldness. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not bad, it does the job. And if you've watched a lot, a few of our reviews, you know, the newer stuff isn't necessarily better. Like all those buttons, like on when we had the V-Sport, the CTS yeah, yeah. V-Sport, with the haptic feedback and all that, it, that wasn't yeah. necessarily better than just a, a button. Yeah. So there's something to be said for the older way. And there's the boost. Yes. First of all, the engine sounds glorious. Those yeah, five does. cylinders, <laughs> sounds like a mini V10. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds so good. <laughs> It does sound like a mini V10. That's I don't know incredible. if that really came out on video, but it sounds so good. I love the sound <laughs> right. of this car. Yeah. Five this cylinders is, for the win. Yeah, it really yeah. is. Five cylinders, like in this car and in five cylinder Audis, are some of the best sounding cars ever yeah. made and that have small displacement engines. It's so smooth, it reminds me of like the three liter inline six from a Beamer. Yeah. And it's it, it doesn't have like a lot of shake. You hear that like nice whine and not a lot of vibration. That's, yeah. that's just Which, nice. It sounds like it has a supercharger. <laughs> it does. Yes, it weird. does. Yes, it it's does. Super weird, but I freaking love it. So now that you felt the power, what about the handling? How are you? Uh, how are you feeling about that? So actually, I've been looking more into the 4C system. So the 4C name itself is a pun 4c so it ha this car has a bunch of different sensors essentially those sensors are feeding information to the car so it has sensors in the front in the back the speed the wheel angle all that information is like fed into the circuit board when it works it's like it's a breakthrough suspension technology it was like the first of its kind like right. it, it, you know when you hear about those um, those smart dampers that can stiffen up or soften depending on the road conditions. 
this was one of those cars that could do it. Actually, everything about this car reminds me of my old Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution. Really? You know, it, it does. Why? But this is a more grown up version of that because, well, just look at the specs, right? This has about 300 metric horsepower. Yep. Um, that's about 296 horsepower. Yep. The Evo had 286 horsepower. That one had a four cylinder turbo. This one, five cylinder turbo. The numbers alone, it, it's very similar. But when it comes to the driving feel, this feels like a more grown up version of the Evo. You know, it's not as crazy. It's not as like high strung as the Evo. This is more grown up. It's more underrated, which is, this is the perfect platform for a sleeper car because like a couple of modifications and I think you're like there and we might just be there with the M3. Yeah. So now, I've been driving this for a while. So uh, what do you think, Chad? You want to yeah. take it for Chad's a spin? Turn. Pull off yeah. of this next street. All right, so shift to change behind the wheel here. We talked about comfort. We kind of touched on the uh, suspension. Uh, behind the wheel, this thing's got a pretty decent amount of poke. We'll find out just how much in a future video. We're definitely going to get this thing on a dyno to see just the scale yeah. of the task that this one, without our knowledge, <laughs> has set up, set up for us. Yes. So, Greg, <laughs> an M3 killer. Yeah. Really? So, yeah. So, the whole point was to basically turn this thing, which it's, it's a really good platform. There's 300 horsepower, 300 torque. The whole thing and the whole mentality was you take a good platform uh, with a lot of utility and make it into something that can totally take an M3 of the time at the track. This is a 2004, we're looking for a 2004 M3. Uh, it's in the E46 generation, which I'm, we're in North Jersey, it's basically the M3 capital of the world outside of Germany. So I think that we can easily find one uh, if we put some messages out there. If you guys have an E46 M3, exactly. yeah. please message us. It's contact at shiftinglanes.com. You can email us if you want to be part of this whole experience, a part of our journey to turn this into an M3 killing dad wagon. And that's another point actually, was <laughs> the dad wagon part Part of it that I don't think we talked about before. Boring. <laughs> we have, I think that keeping true to this car's initial purpose is also important. So when we do weight reduction and things like that, what we can do is leave the back seats. And um, Hanson, I think you touched on this at another point when we were kind of talking about it. Yeah. We might be able to replace the front seats with something a little bit more lightweight. Um, something a little bit racier, like yeah. more lightweight, more like aggressive looking. Well, something yeah, like that. most importantly that's going to support you. Right, yeah, exactly. Because exactly. so, this doesn't. Right, but it also should have that, you know, daily daily driver ability to yeah. go to Home Depot, throw the kids in the back, go camping, do whatever, but also slay the M3 at the track. That's yes. our whole, That's that was my initial idea. I think what we could also do down the line is put a roll cage in here. Make sure that we can still get access to the back seats, but really stiffen up the whole chassis. Mm -hmm. Or at I least that's under underbody chassis stiffening. Yeah. You know. Yeah, but roll works. cage is a great point because you yeah. know that nothing keeps your new child or <laughs> forthcoming child <laughs> safer than roll cage. I mean that the wife has to say yes to that. I, right. You know. <laughs> yeah, and that whole idea, you know, kind of blossomed from like I'm actually going to be a dad soon. So uh, yes. I thought that that would be kind of a cool way to show that. You know, dads can be enthusiasts too. Ah Listen to that whine. <laughs> oh, oh, it sounds so good. You it's can't like wait to get an exhaust on this yeah. thing. That's kind of the plan. How do we get there? Well, Greg touched on it. We gotta, we gotta cut weight down on this thing. We're almost somewhere between four and 500 pounds heavier than an M3, not to mention longer wheelbase, yada, yada, yada. We can't fix that, but we can address weight because more so than adding power, reducing weight just will liven everything else up. It'll make it handle better. It'll put a little less stress on uh, the 4C suspension settings. And when I say that is, that's my main concern here. Power, I did some math to match the power to weight ratio of an E46. We need somewhere in the neighborhood of 370, 380 horsepower. That's easily doable in this engine. I think once you get close to 450, you start risking the actual health of the motor as far as the internals are concerned. Power isn't the issue, it's the ability to handle that M3s are renowned for. So the suspension in this and reducing weight are the two most important factors and what we have to kind of figure out. Because you say dad mobile, that means trying as best we can or absolutely keeping the 4C because you're gonna right. want that comfort mode. Well, you may not, but the wife and 
we'll sell we'll want it. I, little I agree. Yeah, yeah. Like, so agree. trying to trying to keep that is kind of paramount. What we really should do is replace this or bring the 4C system back to health to what yeah. it is uh, to be stock oh, so absolutely. that we can understand Struts. what the the whole gamut of the 4C system has yeah. to offer. What it actually does when it was new, yeah. uh, or at least as new as humanly possible, yeah. uh, that we can feel now I think is definitely paramount to what we need to do in the short term, I agree. Yeah. So that way we can understand what we're dealing with as a platform as it's at its best. Because again, the 4C system is, was kind of like the first of its kind back in 2004. Right. If you look at the Volvos of today, their 4C, four corner system is even more impressive. So it's, it's really cool to see just how this entire system yeah. began in the beginning. Now you kind of see the systems everywhere, you know, like the, the smart dampers with those iron filings that right. can change the damping settings on the fly. It all kind of started right here. So uh, let's bring that system back to health and see what that's like and take us back to 2004 and see how <laughs> truly oh, impressive yeah, this back car to was. 2004. Can't wait to go back to sophomore year of college. Great. <laughs> oh yeah. Got to find some pictures of that. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Going forward, what our plan is is to try to see what this platform has, meaning get it as close to, as it left the factory as we're capable of. So a refresh and tune up on the motor, bringing the 4C back to its glorious 2004 form. And then from there, we'll have a better idea on what we need to add to slay the dragon, so to speak. Yeah. Like this isn't just our car, this is everyone's car. So yeah. like any inputs that you guys could give and we really appreciate all the comments that you've been putting down. Like we're really taking those to heart and there's there's a lot of great ideas that we really wanna really wanna do with this car. So you know when it comes to like modifying this, any input is greatly appreciated. That's pretty much it. We ha we know what we have. We just gotta return a few bits back to you know 2004 basically factory spec and see what the actual scale of our, our challenge is. Exactly. And again, like we mentioned before, if one of you guys have, has an M3 in your northern jersey and you want to come meet us, please let us know. We really want to take a look at your car. We can do a comparison. Again, maybe take you guys to the dyno. So a anything's possible. Yeah, reach yeah. out. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, it's all at Shifting Lanes or email us at contact at shiftinglanes.com. That will also be in the description below. So, you guys have been driving this car. I've been driving this car a bunch. I've made two videos about it. I'm gonna shut up and give you guys exactly what you think about the car as a conclusion. So, have at it. What do you guys think? Well, the best part is cop just drove by, didn't take a second look at us. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Volvo yeah. station wagon, they yes. are not doing yeah. anything wrong. Understated and stealthy. Um, I, my impressions of it is, is that I think we have a good base here. I think there's plenty of performance uh, to start with. There's never enough performance, but you yeah. kind of get what I mean. The interior is uh, a little worse for wear than I thought, but with that said, not one, unfixable, and two, not completely terrible. This is 14 years old. What exactly do you, do you expect? And I love that five-cylinder <laughs> sort of howl or whatever it is. I love that noise. Uh, originally, when Greg said we got this car, I wanted uh, engine swap. I don't want that anymore. I want to put a five cylinder in it. It's such a cool engine. Yeah. It's just, uh, this is a great, great piece. Yeah. Great place to start. Just the little things to get, get it back to its former glory. And then we can go to work. Yeah, I agree. And I, I maintain my initial impressions of how this reminds me of my old Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution. Because again, it has all the important bits. It's got the, well, it doesn't have a four-cylinder turbo. It has a five-cylinder turbo, and it's Sounds got that Haldex all-wheel drive system. Again, not similar to the Evo, but still, like, it's the perfect platform where you could basically make this a, like an understated performance car, and you know, still maintain that sleeper look, but still be able to go very fast. So, I think this is the perfect, perfect platform. Like, back to your point about the. The interior, yeah, it does look old, but like all the old looking stuff you could easily replace. So like it's I'm all fixable. It's all fixable and um, really looking forward to, you know, 
basically going through that process. Oh yeah, yeah. can't wait. Momo I, Dadmobile. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that is what I love about cars. It's yeah. not necessarily, obviously driving a sweet car, it's super fun, what have you. Why I got into cars was to work on cars. And I am so stoked that we finally have a car we can wrench on. <laughs> yes. I cannot, I cannot accurately put that into words. It's, I'm, I can't wait to get my hands dirty and tear this thing apart before. You just put it into words. It was awesome. Go. Well, let's wrap it up, guys. That was, uh, this has been an awesome group drive, I think. Uh, really looking forward to, again, uh, tearing this apart and like bringing it back to health and just seeing what it can do. Um, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Again, uh, let us know in the comments what you think. Give us some inputs. We really appreciate you guys watching this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Hit that bell to get all the notifications for all the Volvo videos and all the press car reviews and all the different events that we attend. Um, Again, if you haven't already, please also subscribe to all of our other social media channels at Shifting Lanes. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're everywhere, also on YouTube. My name is Hanson. That's Chad. That's Gregson. Uh, we'll see you next time.